It's another day at Owens Road Services, Tennessee. Over the years, Tennessee and the surrounding areas have seen companies come and go. Through the difficult late 1970s and early 80s, Owens succeeded in keeping their heads above water by securing invaluable relationships with the steel industry. Relationships which didn't always please some of the trades unions of the time. Nowadays, Owens is the preferred distributor of steel for Chorus in the UK, a contract that is priceless to them. They distribute more than 2,500 tons of steel every week from their warehouses at Llangenech. Dressed up as Cruella de Vil on Children in Need Day, little does Sarah know of the problems that will unfold on this supposedly most jovial of days. They head into town on their lunch break, and Sarah's persuasive talents come to the fore. Nobody is safe from her and her accomplice, Amanda. And before long, the bucket is leading the coins. Back in Davin, they attack the aptly named Wishy Washy. Looking after the pennies so that the pounds will look after themselves is still the philosophy at Owens. And one of the biggest wastages in any haulage and distribution company concerns fuel. The Davin base has installed a fuel tank that all drivers have to use. They have to key in their own personal PIN number and exact mileage so that there is no chance of any misdemeanor happening on the part of the drivers. Owen's fuel bill is a staggering 10 million pounds annually, and all their depots have to be installed with these pumps to guarantee profitability. After months of waiting, today is the day that work finally begins at Bridge End to install their fuel tank. The base is quite a big job. A week and a half work, two weeks work. Um, got to bring some electric and power lines up the building and across power supply. So, yeah, it would be okay. It would be about two weeks, I would have thought. But then they'll have to have the tank fitted themselves. So I suppose all in all, it's more months work, yeah. Yeah, they should keep them busy. <laughs> With their feet constantly on the accelerator, are founding members and brothers, Hugh and Erof Owen. How did it all start is a long time ago, going back 30 years, when I uh, left Gwynbrook Grammar School. All my friends were joining the police force, were going to university, so I thought I'll have a go at joining the police force. When I found out what the wages were, went back and told my old man, and he said, you know, you can't live on that. He was working for a transport company at the time. So he found me a job there, painting and the trailers and uh, odd jobs. Hugh decided to buy a van up in London. So I was plodding on in school, doing the best I could, and he was nagging me to go with him to help him carry furniture and kitchens and this type of thing. And I landed up, I was spending more time with him than when I was in school. I left school before I tried my O levels, again because of pressure, because he bought another two small lorries as well, because he was trying to build things up, and just went with them, started driving them before I should, at night, and um, it's just gone on from there. It's gambles like these that have paid off for the brothers. Today, they have four lorries designated solely to the trostre Sangenek route. This means seven lorry loads a day carrying 600 tons. The Sangenek manager is Simon Davis. 
It's a big operation. There's a lot of movement with Coil to Britain Ferry. Certain foreign drivers will come in. Could go to anywhere then, the Czech Republic, anywhere that, that, the, that the Coil will go. We will hear, load it here. Make sure obviously the security is, is right with the Coil before they leave the site. And then they will go to their destination. We have four chaps on storage all day. They basically run back and forth from Kenneth to Tostra all day bringing coils in just to top the warehouse up with the coils so that we've got a good stock in here then, ready then for distribution. Owens have been unwavering in their support of the steel industry and that support has paid off. Port Steel was their first major client, but it wasn't easy. We could write a book really just on Dewport Steel because I remember doing a steel strike. I remember the pickets and things down at the gates and uh, the management of Dewport Steel then coming to see us in the house late at night because I and I were working out of my mother's front room at the time and um, asking us what was the best way of getting the steel out uh, through the picket line. We went up to Oxford, bought a little company up there with six trucks, brought them down overnight, and um, the pickets thought that um, Duke put had a company from the Midlands and down to get the steel, but little did anybody know at the time it was our vehicles with foreign drivers and we didn't make any friends really at the time but you know we were determined to see Duke Boat deliver the stuff to the Midland plants because otherwise they would stop because Duke Boat was a big name in the steel industry at the time. That steely determination has made Owens the multi-million pound company that it is today. Although dressed up and full of merriment on Children in Need Day, Sarah has a call she can certainly do with it. One of her careless drivers has smashed down a private wall. She is not happy. And he hasn't stopped. Oh, that's fucking bastard. Right, I'll have him now. I'll tell you exactly who he is. Yes, if you could take some photos of your wonderful. If you could email me the photos, and then in the meantime, I'm not sure if you know a local builder. Can you give me two estimates, please? And then send them to myself. This is a fax from Upton in the mail. Wonderful. So we are, Gareth. That'd be lovely. I do apologise again, but I will get on my paper. He's been asking for me straight away. OK, thank you. Bye now. Jan. Nurseries. They have a delightful. Trees. Been delivering, eh? Who's there? Winston! Oh, fuck, he's not gonna knock his head into ball down. Watch out, Winston. This is not a good hair day for Sarah. In the Sangenech distribution warehouse, an extra two steel coils have been unexpectedly requested. This is a headache for Hugh Lewis, as he has to find not only a lorry, but an extra driver to make sure the coils catch their boat at Britain Ferry. Manager Simon Davis has the answer. How are we doing? Oh, not too bad. I've organised a man now to cover that Britain Ferry for you. All oh, right, we've got two loads left. Please yeah. just picking one up now. One up so we've got two, right two loads left to uh, collect for there, and that will be the um, uh, be that end of it. Okay, great. <clears throat> Right, we'll see you in a bit then. Okay, fine. Good time, lad. Sarah has finally got her claws on Winston. Hello? Winston? Who's that? Who the fuck do you think it is? Oh, you boy! That's the least of your problems. What have we been doing? In the nursery. He's taken away a penny to fucking roll and you left the premises, Winston. He came out to get him with it. He came out and he was in his middle. So you didn't miss anything. I'll tell you something now, my life. Right? 
Ali, we should get back to the drive in, that guy. Then what do you want been on the phone? Yeah, you are taking away his wall. Are you sure? Well, he's saying that he's just on the phone now, saying that I'll do less. He's washing his hands or something. Next minute, he's annoyed, he's out of the front and, and he was taken off with, without his wall. Not to your knowledge, you didn't see nothing. Do me a favour, when you stop, right, whenever that'll be, will you check to see your lorry if there's any damage since then? Yeah. yeah. Even though the unhappy gardener has claimed that one of Owen's lorries destroyed his wall, Sarah and the company have to verify this. It's not always the driver's fault, and Sarah fully understands this. Winston nervously awaits his fate. Things are looking up for Owens Road Services in Bridgend. The builders have finished laying the foundations for the fuel tank. They have the crane. All they need now is the actual tank. Eventually the tank arrives to save the company thousands of pounds a month. Bridgend Development Manager John Evans at last has his tank which will nullify any jiggery pokery. As the Owens Empire gradually moves eastward, similar tanks will be installed by Owens to secure less wastage and avoid exorbitant motorway services prices. The man drafted in at short notice is shunter and part-time driver Lee Thomas. Carrying over two and a half tons of steel coils, the drivers have to ensure that they are correctly secured before they even leave base. Every single lorry is checked at the gate. You have to check, make sure the coils are strapped down. You've got about four straps per coil, and uh, you're not allowed out otherwise. People do try, but they get turned back. Safety has to play an integral part in the transport industry. But 30 years ago, Hugh and Aerov could work any and all hours of the day. With the working time directive and everything coming in and all the um, new laws coming in affecting the business, you know what I mean, going back to the 70s, right, people could work, do a damn good day's work every day. But now, unfortunately, with the tachographs and everything else, we are limited to what they can do in a day. But saying that, if that's good for safety, that's fine by us. Things have certainly changed. Most haulage and distribution companies now have to have a designated health and safety officer. At Owens, he is John Payne. Being such a big company now, we're in the public eye across South Wales and even going across the UK. So we have to ensure that our drivers are at the highest standard at all times, whether it's dealing with a customer on site or it's, it's turning up to site on time, strapping loads correctly, making sure the vehicle's clean. Doing all those key parts makes the company move forward and makes it a lot more professional for everybody else to see. Today now we're off to Britain Ferry Docks with a lot of coils to go on a ferry to Italy. Some roads you only have two coils. Other roads then we carry three coils. All depends on the weight. The more weight you go on, the longer it takes to build up speed. And then the harder it is uh, to slow it down again. It takes a long time to stop. If you want to do an emergency stop, it takes a good couple of meters to, uh, to stop with the full back of weight on. In Daven, Sarah is getting more information from Winston about the wall incident. You didn't feel anything. You know, if we're going to take a 10 metre wall down, I, I 
Insurance claims could cost the company millions, and Sarah knows this. She now has to get evidence to support Winston's declaration of innocence. She then passes all information on to John Payne. If you drive in for 12 hours a day or, or wherever it might be, five days a week, accidents do happen. If it was caused by one of our drivers, obviously then it would go through insurance proceedings. If they requested, we would send a member of the ON's staff to go down to that particular site to take pictures and evidence and get statements and just to just to show our faces to be friendly to be a friendly company and show that we don't try to pass it off as not our fault we try to if it's our fault we own up to it the pictures arrive obviously there's damage to the wall but it's inconclusive as to who committed the offense as yet no action has been taken by either side but there's even more trouble brewing for Sarah. In Bridgend, John Evans is over the moon. At long last, the uh, fuel tank is up and operational and uh, working well. Saving us money, saving us time. We can monitor the fuel we're using much better. Uh, obviously, we've got to be careful with some of the spillage in the tank, something, but uh, it's all in hand. So hopefully going forward will save us a fair bit of money. As far as the company is concerned, they can keep an eye on what fuel is being used. Obviously it's got to be more fuel efficient for them. For us it's a lot better. We leave the yard now with a full tank of fuel. We know what mileage we can do, what range the vehicle's got with this system. So we can just base it basically to, to top up a little bit just to get back to the base. There can be no doubt that the fuel they're putting in, is that the fuel they've already used. They can't then we can know any jiggery pokery at all. So now they've got a form with a, a payroll number on it, so they put it in, we know which lorry they're driving, and then it's allocated that lorry of the driver, so that it eliminates any jiggery pokery whatsoever. And that's official. Owen's road services don't do jiggery pokery. Not in Bridgend with John Evans, they don't. Sometimes every time, you know, they, they put the wrong... Uh, Number in, should do, they're all human. And like everybody else, nobody's perfect. There's very few of us about. It's a different matter when drivers are away from home, tramping the country. As Sarah once again finds out. This time, they've received a fax on headed paper that an Owens lorry has been misbehaving on the M6. Fax in paper. Been bad news about the M6. Bad driving and complaints is a constant thorn in the side of the company. And without cameras in the cab, all the office staff can do is trust the honesty of their drivers. Well, he's taken his time to actually write a fax to us. He must have thought he'd done something wrong. Um, a guy from some vehicle watching system. And he goes on to say, as the name of your company was prominent on the vehicle, I thought you should know about how your driver is behaving on the road. It's not only children that are in need today. Sarah could do with some patience. The Lord, you went down. All right, well, just be careful then if you're going to, you know, going to be jumping lanes, all right? All right, cheers, man. What you say, you know? I think most car drivers see heavy goods vehicles as a nuisance because they're large vehicles, they take up a lot of space, they travel at slower speeds. But at the end of the day, the people behind those wheels are professional drivers. That's their job. They've got their entitlements on their licenses. But through all the problems, the pennies still mount at Owen's Road Services.
pushing. You and Erov Owen have been through some scrapes in their time, and nearly always come out on top. Their relationship with Chorus remains strong. Chorus, like British Steel and Dewport before them, have remained loyal to Owens because of the allegiance the Owen brothers showed to them all those years ago. But will the new owners of Chorus, Tata, be as faithful? I just hope that things will work out, but who knows? We've seen so many changes in the last 30 years. Another change won't surprise us. At the end of the day, the way I see it, if they keep producing steel in this part of the country, they're going to need somebody to move their goods. And there's not... There's a fair bit of competition out there, but a lot of their equipment is specialist kit, which we have for the job. So hopefully, as long as we keep giving them the service, they should keep using us. With their steel contracts supporting the company infrastructure, Owens are driving confidently towards the future. Having already acquired some of the Eddie Stobart fleet, they are making inroads into the distribution setup in Northern England. They are also rethinking their involvement in European distribution. It's all looking good for Owens Road Services. Next week, we sort out the company speeding fines with Sarah. We follow Martin Porritt, one of the trailer shop boys. And one of the London trampers finds himself in a tricky situation.